Okay guys, how are we doing? So today, the plan is to brew a challenge beer between me and my two mates uh, and the challenge beer is called the Walter White IPA where we use Golden Promise and white wheat because the boys at Overtone told us that the white wheat was a secret ingredient for some of their absolute banging New England IPAs so we managed to get a hold of some from the homebrew company and they wanted to keep it simple between the three of us so we just went with a golden promise white wheat, no oats or anything else and then we had to pick two hops and what we ended up deciding on was we'll all use Amarillo and then each one will choose a different one so I have went for Denali because it came free with the malt miller that I got one weekend I thought oh, that would be an absolute banging hop with the pineapples and all that sort of thing to do so yeah now Dells went for Southern Cross and Raymond has went for Mosaic so it's going to be really interesting just even to see what each one of those hops imparts on flavour and how they both they all kind of tie together as well at the same time there'll be a quick kind of way for all of us without brewing tons and tons and tons um, of different, then we can compare them as a kind of thing and see what one we actually all prefer. Now, Dell uh, has been brewing Stormers recently, so no doubt uh, knowing him, uh, he'll he'll pull one definitely. Uh, Raymond, we're hoping it's got alcohol in it, uh, and then that will be a good start for him. So yeah. The plan, I did, I was going to use Imperial Juice yeast, uh, but my, uh, I think I got an infection on my starter, so at the moment I uh, swapped it out for the Amiga, is it Amiga yeast? Aye, it's a D the double IPA, the Conan strain. So I'm using that, it's kind of like a, a New England IPA this, so uh, I've went for 5 grams of Amarillo at 60 minutes, which gives my IBU 6.8. I'll put it up in the, up here, so you can see, and then 10 grams of Denali at 10 minutes, as well as 5 grams of Amarillo at 10 minutes, and then we're going to go for uh, two big whirlpool additions of Amarillo and Denali at 40 grams each, and then the plan is then to put 50 grams of each uh, in, the, in the dry hop, so a total hoppage is 100 grams of each, so that was a plan. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the brew day and yeah, see you later. Plans to put tiny bit of Epsom in. I'll do it. Just for a bit of the magnesium. Right, let's tear this thing up. Right, next. Chipson 6.2. Five grams of chloride. Okay, guys. Well, I'm having a bit of an issue with my sparge. That's at full flow, which is not very fast at all. So my thoughts are, this tea. There's normally grain that gets stuck in there. So that's probably why. And the pump's not happy. That's pure. No happy. But yeah, anyway, we're sparging. Yeah. Currently sitting at 66. I wanted it to be 67. Yeah, normally when you set the HLT to 67. Normally when you set the HLT to 67, it kind of balances at the mash turn at 67. It's generally quite good that way. But I think we've got issues with slow sparge or slow ball off. So be circulation to get this thing up to 10. Matthew! Thought you dropped my phone. You broken it? No. But you see that? You got covered on helmet. Hey Matthew, tell them what you're playing. What who? You. Tell everyone on YouTube. Eh, I'm playing Mario. What kind of Mario? Eh. Uh -uh. Is it good? Yes, it's a racing one. Racing? 
Yes. Do you like my reel? Love it. It was past the time in a brew day, doesn't it, Matthew? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. How old are you? How old are you, Brewtube? How old are you? Yeah. Sorry, the guys can see that, but it's saying 5.34 skew. You can see in the big tail, it's currently just sitting at the boil at 100 degrees. And we've got 37 minutes to go till flame out. Well, that's her all buttoned up and chilling. So that's the whirlpool now finished and it's now chilling down. The pitching temps, and the plan is now to pitch the Conan yeast once it's into the fermenter, so you can get that in. So, kind of went all right there in the end. I had to get the kids all bathed up and get them all to the bed, so that's when I just left it to do the steep for 30 minutes of the whirlpool because it's got the whirlpool going now. I've just covered it up with a bit of cling film just to make sure I've tried. Make sure nothing goes in while I'm away. And yeah, it seemed to go alright actually. It's quite nice having the brewery in the garage where I'm not absolutely honking the house out, so <laughs> it's good that way. And this is down to 40 degrees now, so yeah. Fingers crossed this is a good it's a good brew. Because again, five gallons. <laughs> oh, must say actually, so the innocent gun laggers now kegged and it is spectacular. I should really do a quick review I think. It would be quite good. I hold on I'll go get it. And that is her there. Check it out. She's actually uh, well carbonated that's for sure. And in my new beer glass from the Ayrshire Beer Festival 2019. Absolute cracker, apart from almost losing my wallet, but finding it again, so that was good. I just find it in the air, my home. It's got a nice multi character to it. Um, I would say this isn't a million miles away from the actual innocent gun. It's pretty damn tasty. Easy drinking. I think last night I had about three pints of it. And I was like, normally the other stuff it's or two, but that's a uh, sub user. Plans to take a wee gravity reading, see what we get. There we go, a nice kind of orangey colour there. So, right, we'll do a, a gravity reading, let you know what it is. So, according to my drama, it's 1040, which is balls because. I took a pre boil gravity of 1039. This thing's saying 1043. Last one that confirms the tilt, isn't it? How do you stop the star bar from going in? Here's a question for you guys How many tilt batteries do you go through? Because I seem to be every brew. We we'll be going through batteries. But there's no tomorrow. I every pretty much every brew day I have to swap it out because it's it's absolutely pan breed flat. So 
I've got the double cap, the older version. So I just push it out. First, I'll need to sanitise this sucker. There we go, old. Out with the old, in with the new. Yeah, that's her. Let's hope. Let's hope she's good. And we'll check out what the result is. Get my Raspberry Pi Zero in the fridge itself because I think when she try and communicate outside the fridge, it's just too. When she communicate out the fridge, it's just too far. So just put it in the fridge, and then the Pi's strong enough to then communicate with the Wi-Fi. Which then sends it to my other Raspberry Pi, which I use as my screen over here. So I'll set you up. The Tear 42 at 20.6 degrees. Um, ba -ba -bum. Right, login. Walter White. Right, it's not the innocent gun anymore. Right, we'll call it that then. Um, that's the uh, buttoned up, tilt set. Now it's just time to wait for the fermentation to start, which should be pretty quick considering it was done on a starter and it's going on and yeah, I'm pretty expecting this to be mental. Right, see you later, bye bye. Yo yo yo, next day, got my spoon sanitised, I've got my Sainsbury's Basic Salsa Dip sanitised, cleaned out with PVW. And then sanitizer. So let's go and harvest some Krausen yeast. This thing is going tits by the way. I've seen like a big, much thicker cruising before. Maybe uh, come back to it another day or two. Get another check and see if we get anything better than that because that's a bit. don't know. Looks weird. It smells good. Doesn't it look right? I'll tell you that. Nice right, okay, so it is now Thursday, so I brewed on Sunday and it's almost finished, pretty much. I can hear a tiny wee bubble. It's like really good. Um, but yeah, it's sitting about 10, 12. So I thought, oh, fun, I'll just put the rest of the dry hops in now, just in, so it can strip off any more of the any oxygen or anything like that left over. But I'm going to put it in this take uh, okay, hopper because you know what's going to happen with the, when I try to use the tap, it'll end up with the leaf hops, it'll just block it and I'll be able to get anything out. So, can I look what's happening now? Come on! This is. Ah, crap. Got a couple of weights in this as well. Just to weigh it down because sometimes these things float. Couple of whiskey. Couple of whiskey stones. Useful for something, I suppose. Right, let's do this. And I'll just plop that straight in. There we go. Let's 
that's us, job done. Just make sure I put the tube back in. Now, yes, I'll leave it there at the current temperature. I think it's about 20 degrees at the moment. So I'll leave it in there just now for maybe a day to let it drive off any of that oxygen. Then we'll take it down to about the usual 14 for dry hopping and then leave it there. I think I'll probably do about five days and then I'll crash it down to one degrees or something like that and then that'll be us all done. That was pretty quick. I mean we're not even, this is us now the first week and uh, Conan is finished. The only problem I, c I couldn't harvest any of the Conan and what I did there is I tried to turn the tap as well to so it was at the bottom to try and pull some into a wee jar from the yeast bed but there's it wasn't pulling up anything actually so maybe because I haven't crashed it as well is the problem so the yeast is still in suspension so we may not be able to get this going on because it's maybe the, the crowding was so quick within a day and then when I came back like a day later the crowding was pretty much it was like a kind of white uh, bubbly head but it wasn't any, remember when I was taking it off with the spoon? Came back the next day and it was even better. So that's probably oxidised my beer, but I don't think it has actually, it's not too bad. So, hear that? Oh, that normally happens actually, it does bubble away when you drop in hops, doesn't it? So, yeah. Hopefully everything will be okay and we'll be getting kegging this next. And it'll be a nice juicy beer. Fingers crossed. Alrighty. Abby. Ba ba watch you have you ready will Yes sir, yes sir, feedback will. Ciao, <laughs>